If you enjoy when I look at footage of different injuries in sports, then this video is for you. Steph Curry once again has injured his right ankle, this time against the Clippers in their closing game of the playoffs. He says he'll be fine and ready to play in the next round against the Rockets, but this just adds another chapter to this legacy of ankle injuries for Curry. Welcome back everybody. For those new, my name is Brian and I'm a doctor and a sports fan and it's my goal on this channel to combine those two interests to explain different sports injuries and sports medicine topics in a way that's easier for you all to learn from. I reviewed footage from multiple previous ankle injuries that Curry has sustained and then looked at the research that we have on recurrent ankle sprains to try to make a connection between why Curry throughout his career and still to this day seems to be so prone to these repetitive ankle sprains. We know he's had surgery on those ankles. He went through this big rehab program previously to try to get everything under better control, but this still obviously continues to be a big concern in his playing career. We'll start off by reviewing some of the key concepts that we have in the medical literature that talk about what predispose people to these recurrent ankle sprains. We'll then tie that into the footage of his previous ankle sprains to try to draw some connections so you guys can better visualize and understand what we're talking about with why these repetitive ankle sprains can happen. Make sure you guys go subscribe if you like this type of content and wanna see more of these videos in the future and let's get started. Right off the bat, looking at the injury that happened against the Clippers, this was kind of more of a fluke and not like the other ones that we're gonna look at in this video. This was an instance where he basically stepped on someone's foot and caused that ankle to roll nearly a complete 90 degrees over to the side. But it's of course that same ankle, that same right ankle that has had surgery and has been sprained so many times in the past. In the medical literature, you'll hear this idea of chronic ankle insufficiency, and that's just another description for what can be factors that cause people's ankles to be so predisposed to repetitive injuries and sprains. We're not gonna spend a bunch of time going into all the anatomy of the specific ligaments. I'm assuming you guys understand some basics about ankle sprains. Essentially, we have all these ligaments throughout the inside and outside of the ankle that try to provide structural stability and support to keep our ankle from rolling. We know that the more ankle sprains you have, the more predisposed you are to future sprains. And so we know that Curry's ankle has really never been the same as it was before all these injuries started, even with the surgeries and all the rehab that he's had. There's a reason he keeps injuring that right ankle. It's not just random chance, it's because that's the one that keeps getting injured before and is more and more susceptible as games go on. The two things I wanna highlight that we can see in the literature about chronic ankle insufficiency are dorsiflexion impairment and weakness or poor reaction time in the muscles that provide eversion to the foot. Dorsiflexion is whenever we pick our toes up. If while we're running, we don't have adequate muscle support or strength there to pick our toes up off the ground, you're more susceptible to catching your toes as you walking and then tripping. Whenever you catch your toes, you then make that ankle susceptible to rolling and causing a sprain of those ligaments. Eversion of the foot is whenever the foot turns to the outside, which is the opposite direction of the most common type of ankle sprain. Most ankle sprains are an inversion type of injury as shown here, and so the everter muscles are two muscles in particular that sit on the outside portion of the lower leg right by the fibula that try to help pull that foot outward into an everter position. Specifically, they're called the peroneus longus and the peroneus brevis. And you can think of them in a sense as providing some additional support along with those ligaments on the outside of the foot. If you think about how quickly your ankle can turn whenever you roll it, you need to have really quick reaction time of those muscles to really be able to fire really fast as the ankle's rolling to sort of pull it back up into a more proper position. Whenever people rehab ankle injuries, a lot of time they're working on strengthening these particular muscles. So these are two things that we know from research have been suggested to make people more predisposed to recurrent ankle injuries. So is it possible that we can look back at the footage of his previous ankle injuries and make some connections between these points in research and what's actually happened? Talking first about these limitations with dorsiflexion, there aren't as many, but there are some occasions we can look at and postulate that maybe that was part of what was going on. One of the most notable instances occurred here against the Wizards where he's dribbling down the court and seems to kind of just catch his foot on the ground. He didn't step on anybody to cause it to roll. He just was dribbling down and then kind of caught that outside portion of the foot and caused his ankle to roll. Theoretically, if that foot's able to pick itself up more off the ground, you might not catch those toes and cause the sprain. We can see a similar instance against the Spurs, where as he just takes off down the court after getting the ball, that foot just kind of gets caught. That outside portion of his right foot just gets caught here on the ground and causes it to go into an inversion type of sprain. By far and away though, the more common ones that we can look at to try to draw some connections with this research is potential limitations with those everter muscles. As we're looking through these, think about how those everter muscles on the outside of the lower leg are trying to fire and act to prevent that ankle from rolling inward. If either they can't react quickly enough or they're not strong enough, then they can't provide the support 
whenever those ligaments aren't there to provide enough support themselves. December of 2010, he's just dribbling, and as he plants that right foot again, that ankle just rolls outward. In 2011, then in a game versus the Kings, he goes out and we still see the same thing. That right foot plants and then it rolls out to the side. Another game against the Clippers, it looks like initially he might've stepped on Blake Griffin's foot, but when we zoom in more closely, there was no real contact at all. It was just that that foot was moving to the side, planted, and then there was no eversion support on that outside of the foot. If we look at some of the more recent seasons in 2017, this was one of the more notable ones playing against the Pelicans. He goes out trying to deflect a pass, and as he plants with that right foot, same exact thing. All that momentum is carrying his body outwards, and so you need that support with the ligaments and the muscles on the outside of the foot, and when they're just not there, then the foot just continues to roll and sprains those ligaments. The scare that he had just a couple of weeks ago before the playoffs was the same similar mechanism, and this might have a little overlap with the foot catching on the ground, but we see him going here again, and as he plants with that right foot, there's just no support to keep that ankle from rolling. There's nothing between the ligaments and the muscles on the outside of the foot trying to provide that stability to keep that ankle from rolling. Now there are of course the other instances where he just has stepped on someone's foot. These are much harder to prevent. These are a lot harder to rehab against. We saw this happen against Zaza Pachulia where he came down on his foot. And then of course the most recent one against the Clippers was an instance where he just stepped on someone's foot. But all this still matters. All of that stability on the outside portion of the ankle between the ligaments and the muscles still plays a super key role because even if you step on someone's foot, you still want the ankle to have that support so that it doesn't sprain and stretch those ligaments even more. Sometimes these braces can help, but they don't provide enough stability to keep the ankle from rolling as we can obviously see here. In this clip, his ankle goes almost a complete 90 degrees whenever it sprains. I don't care how much rehab, strengthening, surgery you've done, those ankles are loose whenever something like this happens. We'll address in another video what the types of things he's done in terms of the rehab and the surgeries and tie that in with what people can do in general to try to prevent ankle injuries, but I wanted to look more so at just the footage of the injuries to explain this idea of either that impaired dorsiflexion with the toes catching and the combination of having weakness or poor reaction time in those everter muscles. Thankfully though, even if those ligaments are weak and the muscles are weak, it's an idea of trying to provide enough support on the outside so that you don't have pain and you're able to still play. With Curry, those ligaments have become so stretched out by now that they're probably really not doing much of anything to keep that ankle strong and supportive. He's obviously working on the different exercises to increase those peroneal muscle strength and reaction times, but his ankle has been injured so many times that it's never gonna be 100% back to the way it was before and is always gonna be more susceptible to getting hurt. The big thing though is just how much pain he has after these types of injuries and how much it limits him from being able to push off, run, and do what he needs to do to play. The stability really isn't there much anymore, and that's why he's wearing these braces. As we see most of the time, they can provide some good amount of support, but in the case where he steps on someone's foot, like just happened with the Clippers, it's not gonna do anything to actually keep that foot from completely rolling. So we'll see going forward how this affects him in the rest of the playoffs. We know that anytime you've sprained your ankle, you're more susceptible to spraining it again, and one of the key parts of the recovery is having adequate time to allow it to heal back in place. The hard part about Curry's situation is he's had so many previous injuries that we don't really have a good idea of how long that rest and rehab time might be. In his case, if he's not having pain and he can functionally do what he needs to do, then he's gonna play and that sounds like what's gonna happen. But it's important to know going forward that after a sprain like this, it's more susceptible to getting sprained again, especially in a situation where he might land on someone's foot. But that's it for this video, everybody. I hope you enjoyed kind of reviewing some of the footage from these previous ankle sprains in the context of him hurting his ankle once again. The next time you see someone injure their ankle, think about what that mechanism might have been. Understand that it's not just those ligaments on the outside and inside of the ankle providing support, it's also the muscles that are involved in the ankle and foot that are there firing to provide that additional stability whenever the ankle might sprain. This will tie in later on to what we'll talk about in terms of how we rehab and try to prevent ankle injuries, and a key part of it is trying to strengthen these muscles and improve those reaction times so that you don't roll the ankle and you have that quick reaction to prevent it from getting sprained. Thanks as always for watching everybody. Let me know any comments below, questions, thoughts you have about future video ideas. Enjoy watching the rest of the NBA playoffs this year. And until next time, thanks for watching. We'll see you later. Bye.